Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the Xerox 700. Uh, this machine commonly has uh, a fault which comes up 042326 or 042327. Uh, this indicates a problem in the IBT belt cleaner or IBT belt sensor. Uh, and I'm going to show you today how to clean uh, the IBT belt cleaner out, which is really the, the most common problem and, and it will normally fix uh, the error code. So, first things we do is we open the front door. We have two different screwdrivers here. I have one that is a five and a half mil magnetic screwdriver and one which is a Phillips, albeit that could be a flathead, but it has to be quite uh, small at the end. And the reason for that is that when I open the main transfer unit, which is this, and pull it out, there are a lug on the side here. And so what you do is you put your screwdriver in there and you release the lug behind. Have that at a slight angle and then you move to the other side. The bar is exactly the same on the other side with exactly the same hole and you release that side as well and now you can able to pull the main transfer unit forward and it's there it stops and now we don't need this screwdriver. The next thing I'm going to do is undo this screw in here. And the same on the opposite side, screw in there. Now what I've done is I've released the IBT belt. I pull this handle down and I pull this handle up, which connects to the drums. And this will now enable me to pull the transfer belt out. As I pull it out, just pull it out gently because it can catch on the top here. Once I pull it out, it stops. I can now then push this handle back down, which locates the drums. The reason why I push this down is because I'm going to lift this belt up, and when I lift this belt up, if this handle was sticking out, it could dent the belt, and, uh, or it could even go through the belt, and then it's ruined. Next thing I do is lift this IBT belt up, and there's a small metal prong underneath here, and that goes in that hole there, which will allow that belt to now be rigid and stable. Right, now I take this top right hand screw out next to this white cog, like so, and this bottom left hand screw next to this nipple here, that comes out as well. Once I've done that, that will allow me now to pull the IBT belt cleaner out. What you do is you just basically keep your hand on this handle here to keep the thing rigid so it doesn't fall down and pull. Once you've pulled, drop the back down of this in my right hand. I can release my hand off there now and I just gently ease that out, trying not to obviously scratch or dent this belt because it's basically a plastic material and it can damage very easily. That is the IBT belt cleaner. What you'll find, this is very, very clean, is this will all be clogged up, the toner everywhere and around this roller inside here. Now, we have engineering vacuum cleaners that we use with a small rubber nozzle on the end to, to clean this out. You shouldn't really use a conventional vacuum cleaner with a hose on the end, but people do. I don't advise it, but that's down to you. What I do normally is I'll, I'll pull this spring back and it will locate a little hole there. Tip it upside down, the vac vacuum nozzle on the end, and suck out any excess toner, like that. Once that's done, spin it back round. These little white black cogs on the side, this will spin this roll around, clockwise, and you vac out there, and you clean that toner out. And then these pads, these will be covered in toner. You need to obviously clean those as well. Sometimes I think people use like a stiff, uh, paintbrush and just you know brush it up and then vac it out a little bit but anyway as long as you get them clean try to be careful around this blade because that's the blade that uh, takes off the excess toner and it's very sharp you cut your finger on it but also you don't want to dent it or bend that that done once you've done that you can then put the uh, the cleaner back in the machine now if you look at this here this spring this goes behind the lug at the back here and that goes underneath if you can see and then this black nipple goes into that hole there so once it's in you locate it up now on the front of the machine 
just have to locate it once it's in these nipples have to go in these two holes clip it in it's now in you can now put your two screws back in like so Remove the bar from its hole and clip it back in and then put the IBT belt back. Uh, this bracket or whatever you want to call it slots into this hole here. Nice and rigid and it's in. Once you've done that, you pull the handle back up, releases the drums and that will now allow you to slide this back in. Using these little uh, pressure pads on the side here, you push it back in and that will release it. Push it back slowly because the, the belt itself can get caught as it's going in you can tear it. So just very gently just push it back in. Once it stops, it'll allow you then to just give it a little push in and now it's rigid. Put the handle down, put the other handle up, release the lugs on the side here for the main transfer, uh, the main unit and then you can slide that back in, pull up the handle. You must put these two screws back in first. into the transfer unit and close the door. The code should now go from the screen. If it doesn't, reboot the machine uh, and try it again. If the code comes back up again, then it's probably you've got uh, toner on the actual sensors of the actual transfer unit itself. And that means that you'll have to take the whole transfer unit out. Um, I'm doing another tutorial and, uh, of how to replace uh, the IBT belt and you'll see on that the, the sensors are on there. Thank you very much for watching.